Welcome to Top 3 Tuesday, and yes, I am back in my usual spot. Still having problems with the computer. Give you guys a real quick description of what the problem is. Windows 8, that's what the problem is. I downloaded a consumer review, installed it on a separate partition on the hard drive, and somehow it still totally screwed everything up. I uninstalled it to see if that would help, and then somehow it just screwed everything up. I ended up having to reformat and reload Windows XP, and now things seem to be working better, but you know how it is. You load XP, and then you have to fix things, so whatever. Anyway, the webcam is working, and I can't do any editing on the computer, so I'll have to do the editing on my laptop, so it's still going to be kind of tricky. Whatever. You don't care. Top 3 Tuesday. Yeah, a few video responses last week. Let's see here who we had. We had... Lewis Dublin, Heather Mason 76, Kit 171, 8 Dragon Quest, Thrift Dweller, Sega and More, SL Gaming Blog, Michael B. the Game Genie, Andrew's Game Display, Console Gamer 88, Mr. Silver 9692, and X Game Storm X. So, there you go. That is who we had do video responses last week. And thank you. Uh, a few people had some issues with the question eating while gaming. I said that I don't eat a lot while I'm gaming because I don't like getting dirty hands, but I do eat pretzels, and I'll admit that occasionally I will stop and go eat something and then come back to gaming when you can. Uh, most people apparently didn't think that you could do that, or they didn't consider beer a snack, so there you go. Now, moving on to this week, we have Andrew's Game Display, which, if you haven't subscribed to Andrew's Game Display already, you need to because the guy has a massive collection and that's coming from me and I am somebody who has a fairly sizable collection so for me to say that this guy's collection makes mine look pitiful it's really saying something so go check him out here is his question hello everyone I am Andrew from Andrew's Game Display and it is an honor to be asking uh, this week's question for our EDT 1138's uh, latest Top 3 Tuesday. And uh, my question is, what are the top three rarest items in your collection? Because of course the main thing when you're collecting is you want to collect things that you enjoy and the things that you want. So having rare things isn't always the main like goal of a collector, but it definitely is neat to have a few things that maybe aren't too common or not too many other people have. So I'm um, just today, uh, for this week's question, I'm just uh, asking what are some of your rarest things and the things that you don't think uh, are all that common and easy to find uh, out in the wild and things like that. So to start us off, my third choice is my complete mint in the box Famicom disk system. I am a big fan of uh, foreign consoles and things like that, especially Japanese ones. And I've always really loved the Famicom disk system. So you have the lid there, you have all the paperwork in mint condition, and you of course have the console. And I mean, anyone who knows anything about the Famicom disk system will know that um, the belt's inside the brake, and they have all sorts of other problems, so it's rare just to find an actual working one. So I have always loved the Famicom Disk System, so I can take it out of the box for just a quick look, and uh, uh, having it complete in the box with all the paperwork is uh, one of my rarest things, and that is why I placed it as number three on my list. So we'll just place it off to the side there. And moving on to uh, number two, the second rarest item in my collection is my complete in box, Bubble Bobble Part 2. Now, a lot of games in the NES, um, a lot of, sometimes when they had sequels, they were released too late in the NES's life, so people had already uh, moved on to the Super Nintendo and things like that. And uh, Bubble Bobble Part 2 is one of those cases where not, it's not too many people bought it. It's not super easy to find, especially complete in the box uh, with the manual and stuff like that. So that is why it is uh, number two on my, wrist, on my list of uh, the rarest items in my collection. Other examples of games like that are like DuckTales 2 and things like that, where they came out too late and uh, they didn't sell too well, and uh, they're hard to get your hands on these days. Uh, anyway, the rarest item in my collection, and by far uh, one of the rarest things I've ever seen, is my NBA 2-Ball Demo Disc. And the interesting thing about this is this, this was only given out in limited quantities at the 1998 uh, NBA All-Star Game, so uh, it's not really known how many were given out, although up to this point, only about four or five, including this one, have been found, so it's uh, definitely quite a rare piece, and something I am very uh, happy to have in my collection, so uh, yeah, that's it for my top three rarest items, and I'm looking forward to seeing other people, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, back to EDT 1138.
Okay, now that question is not as simple to answer as it first seems because you generally tend to think about the most valuable items in your collection when you think rare. It's not always the case. For example, here I have Earthbound, one of the most valuable games on the Super Nintendo. Here is Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger, according to Rarity Guide, is 10% more rare than Earthbound, yet Earthbound is two and a half times as valuable as Chrono Trigger. That logic kind of hurts my brain because they're both RPGs, Chrono Trigger is supposedly more rare, and in my opinion, it's the better game of the two. So, by rights, this should be significantly more valuable than this, but it's not. I don't know, I suppose if somebody had two Earthbounds and you added them up, it would be like 120% rare, and that'd be really rare, but pfft, who has two Earthbounds? Now, my number three item is one that kind of surprised me. What I essentially did is I went on to Rarity Guide and just looked at games for all of my systems. Well, not all of my systems because Rarity Guide does not have all the systems that I have in my collection, but all of the systems that I could. And to make it easier on myself, I just looked up the rarity on them and sort of went with a couple of games. Now, the scary thing is... I don't know the value or the rarity of half the stuff in my collection, and a good chunk of it is in boxes. I really need to go through and catalog this stuff. It's kind of scary that I have no idea what I've got or how much it's worth. But Mega Man 5, it turns out, is number three in terms of rarity, I think. And if this works, you'll hopefully see a picture, a screen grab from Rarity Guide, and I'll have some audio on there. I don't know, though, because I have to edit it on my laptop, so we'll see. Here you go, check this out. Alright, so you see here, this is rarityguide.com. And according to it, Mega Man 5 is 84% rare. Not the most valuable game that is 84% rare, but hey, it's 84% rare. What do you want? Hopefully what you just saw was Rarity Guide saying that this thing is 84% rare. Not the most rare game for certain, and not even the most valuable game at 84% rare, but still, turns out, one of the rarest games, I think, in my collection. Number two is a game that is more rare than it is valuable, and it is ALF for the Sega Master System. Uh, I have ALF complete in the box, although I mean, you can see that it's a little bit ratty there at the bottom, <laughs> whatever. Uh, ALF, well, I'll let you look here, hopefully this works. Alright, now, I bet that you guys thought Power Strike or Alex Kidd and Shinobi World or Fantasy Star or Golden Axe Warrior would be more rare than ALF. And I don't know how true this actually is, but at least according to rarityguide.com, ALF is the third rarest North American Master System released game. So, or North American released Master System game. You knew what I meant to say. There you go. ALF, 90% rare. Now, as you can see, ALF is the third most rare North American release Master System games. And it's kind of surprising, actually. You wouldn't think that this would be that rare, but apparently not a lot of people bought ALF. And if you've ever played ALF, it's not the greatest platforming game ever, so I kind of get why it might be rare. Although not super duper valuable. It's still worth a few bucks, though. And I don't recall ever seeing too many copies of it out there, at least not in the box. Number one on my list is a thing. It is not a game. Uh, I knew that this one was particularly rare because I ran across it on eBay almost completely by mistake and thought, what the heck is that thing? And I tried looking it up online. I couldn't find at that time any information on it. So I ended up finding it on Atari2600.com and check this out. Okie dokie, right off the bat you can see that this one is different. That is because it is not on Rarity Guide. Or for that matter, any other source of information regarding price or rarity that I can find online. If you do a search for this on Google, the first thing that will pop up on it is a video that I shot when I opened it up and tested it out. So that alone should tell you that this thing is pretty darn rare. Now you'll see on the left I circle Compro Video Plexer, on the right I circled three other things. The first one is the value, $349. It is the ninth most valuable Atari 2600 piece of hardware. Next to that, you'll see the rarity. It is a rarity of 10, which is the highest rarity that you can get. And just to the right of that, you'll see an arrow pointing up, 
Meaning as of April 29th of this year, the value of this item is trending upward. Yay me. Hopefully that worked. And if it did, you will know that I am referring to the Compro Video Plexer. And uh, like I said, I ran across this thing on eBay. The guy had it mislisted. Is that the right term? That's not even a real term. Anyway, he had it listed in completely the wrong category and nobody was finding the thing. He had like the views listed down at the bottom and there were like four views for something that had been listed for months. And I'm gonna guess that, you know, those four views were mostly that guy. So I was the beneficiary of having a, a item that nobody knows about listed in a place where nobody's going to see it. So I bought a few of these and then I told my older brother about it and even against my better judgment, he went and bought all of the rest of them. So, I don't know. The guy that was selling them must have found a storage unit full of these things and had no idea what they were worth because he couldn't look them up and find them anywhere online. I was smart enough to figure out where it's at, so I have, I don't know, my brother and I have pretty much cornered the market in, whoa, Compro Video Plexers. Now, this one you can see is unsealed and you can watch my video of it. It's not a really particularly good video, but it's up there and it'll give you a little bit of information. Uh, what this is essentially is a switcher for the Atari 2600. You plug it in, you stick eight cartridges in it, and then you hit the buttons and you can just go back and forth from one cartridge to the other. Now, I don't know how worthwhile this actually is. I don't actually use the thing, but when I was a kid, I'd have loved this. And it is a pretty neat piece of hardware. The cool thing is, the rest of them are all factory sealed. So, yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't know if they would actually sell for 350 bucks because who the heck wants the things? But they're worth that much, and they're apparently very rare. So there you go. Those are my three most rare items, and i got to hurry up and end this video. Uh, check out Andrew's game display. He, like I said, he's a pretty entertaining guy. Uh, has a massive collection really impressed with this collection and uh yeah that's all i gotta say oh wait a minute no there's one other thing my son wanted me to mention on here that he is really sorry he didn't get his video game room tour up it's actually just his bedroom but uh we tried we were having camera issues and then we had computer issues and that was part of the reason that i worked today to get this computer up and running so hopefully he says we will have it out next weekend we're going to do our very best and hopefully you guys will check it out say nice things to him. Otherwise, I'll hunt you down and beat you for making my son cry. Probably wouldn't really do that, but please don't make my son cry. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys later.